This is a lesson on photons, light as a particle, and a unit on modern physics. The derivation for understanding light as a particle starts with the photoelectric effect, diagrammed here in this picture. And so what we do is we take light, you can see that there's light here, shine it at some shiny metal surface. There's a metal surface. Light ejects the electrons here, and we can see that electrons will get ejected from the shiny metal and they're attracted and what you can see is that when you set up a circuit like this you can get the electrons to be attracted to the positive side of maybe like a capacitor right attracted to a positive side and what we can see is that um, then we get electron flow and we can measure a current and so that's the the effect the photoelectric effect is when you shine light at a metal and electrons are emitted. That's the photoelectric effect. The electrons are bound to the metal, but can become free if enough energy from an outside source is received to overcome the binding energy of this electron. And the binding energy of this electron is what we call the work function. And it's designated by a couple of different symbols depending on the book and your faculty member. Uh, some people call it W naught for the work function, or capital letter phi. You could also, I've seen it just a small phi as well. Any of those be prepared because I've seen it in different ways in different texts, etc. So that's what's happening is the light comes in. We know that light carries energy. Uh, we know how to calculate that energy. And what happens is that energy is being transferred to that electron. The electron becomes free from its atom and from the surface in general and it's ejected from that surface and we can observe it outside of the surface. What factors affect this phenomenon? What we see is that we can vary the energy of the light coming in, right? We know energy equals HF for light, so if we vary the frequency, we'd have a different energy for that light. Or we could vary the intensity of that light which would intuitively say that there's more energy in general, um, but it's a different type of energy. By increasing intensity, we would just make it brighter somehow, right? There would be more light. Um, but the issue here is that it wasn't, this light was not working exactly how people thought to begin with. The original model for light did not include particles. Uh, what was observed is electrons were emitted and current observed only after a cutoff wavelength or frequency. All right, so there's some sort of frequency up here. That's the cutoff frequency of the incoming light. After this wavelength, electrons were ejected at varying speeds but did not increase in number. So it's weird. You'd think if you would add more energy, if you increase the intensity, you would get more electrons. But what happens is there was the same number of electrons, but each had a larger energy after ejection. Okay, so kind of contrary to what you would expect. We would expect more electrons, but there was just as many, but more energetic. So what's happening? What's happening here that is not being accounted for? And the effect is the photoelectric effect. Instead of thinking light as a continuous beam, and if we increase the intensity, we just get more light, what we think about is light as a particle. Each one of those particles has an energy, HF, and when we increase the intensity, we're increasing the number of particles. If we want to increase the energy of each photon, we would have to change the frequency of that photon. If we wanted to increase the number of photons, then we would increase the intensity. So the conclusion here is that light of a certain quantized value of energy could overcome this work function. When I think about the photons coming in and hitting the metal, we need the minimum amount of energy in order to make that electron be ejected from the material is the work function. And as such, light comes in packets of quantized energy. I can say that a photon comes in, hits that electron, gets absorbed by the electron, and then the electron is ejected from the surface. And we know the energy of that photon is given by HF. 
which we also know as hc over lambda, right? C equals lambda f. And I am giving you the shortcut here for calculations. This is what I'm going to use. This is what I use for calculations. 1242 nanometers times EV over lambda. When you multiply H and C together and do a little bit of conversion with EVs and nanometers, you can use this version of the equation, 1242 nanometers, and your wavelength down here has to be in nanometers as well. If you use this equation and just use the regular values for H and C, you have to have lambda in terms of meters, as opposed to this one over here where you'd want lambda in terms of nanometers, and then you would get EVs out. And of course the energy conversion is here, one EV is the 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So pretty interesting effect. Let me just solidify again what's going on with a photoelectric effect. And I took this picture from one of the simulations from uh, FET at Colorado, very good research group. And what you see is light is coming in. These are violet photons. It comes in and it hits this plate in the circuit. Uh, electrons are ejected. All of these here is an electron. All of them are electrons and they're ejected with some sort of speed. If I turn on this battery and this is the negative plate and this is the positive plate, all of those electrons will be attracted to the positive plate and I will get a current. So what we're seeing is light comes in, this energy from the photon comes in, hits the electron in the metal. The energy of that photon follows conservation of energy. The energy of that photon goes into overcoming that work function. And also, if that photon gets absorbed and it's greater than the work function, that electron will also have some amount of kinetic energy. So this is just conservation of energy. The energy of the photon comes in. It must minimally overcome that work function. And then if there's any energy left over, that electron will have some kinetic energy. Note for every incoming one photon, there is one electron freed. For every one photon coming in, there's one electron freed. And this is where the idea of light being a particle kind of comes into account. Kind of comes into existence, right? For every one electron, one photon gets absorbed. And that photon must have a minimum amount of energy in order for that electron to get bounced out. If that photon is greater than that, it'll give the electron some kinetic energy. The cutoff wavelength or cutoff frequency is the minimum energy to overcome the work function. So what we're going to say is the energy of that photon coming in is just equal to the work function the kinetic energy is zero, right? We have to have that minimum value in order to overcome the work function, and then anything else will be converted to kinetic energy. So let's do an example to practice this. I have the unknown metal, an unknown metal, light with a wavelength 120 nanometers strikes a metal and ejects electrons with a maximum kinetic energy of 4.7 EVs. What is the work function of this metal? What is the cutoff frequency and wavelength for this metal? So when we look at the work function here, that's W naught, and I have the conservation of energy equation up here. We're solving for W naught. What is the work function of the metal? We're given the wavelength of the photon coming in, of the light coming in, we're given the wavelength. So we can imagine that a photon of this wavelength, which we would be able to calculate the energy of that photon, the energy of that photon goes into overcoming the work function and giving that electron kinetic energy. So if I'm solving for the work function, I'm going to take the energy of the incoming photon and subtract off the kinetic energy of that electron. The energy of the photon, I'm going to go 1242 over 120. I'm going to use this version of it. If I have lambda in nanometers, I can just uh, do 1242 nanometers over EVs, and this will give me the energy of the photon in EVs. I'd subtract off the 4.7 EVs. That is the kinetic energy that they tell me in the problem, right? Kinetic energy. And when you run this through your calculator, you get the work function is 5.63 repeating EVs and I expect it to be bigger than 4.7. So that's the work function of that metal. 
All I did was conservation of energy. I knew the energy of the photon. I knew the energy of that electron. And the difference there had to be whatever was lost to overcoming that work function. It says, what is the cutoff frequency? Well, if I want to find the cutoff frequency, what I'm going to note, the kinetic energy in this situation is going to be zero, such as the energy of this incoming photon is equal to the work function. I'm going to write out what I know here. I have hc over lambda, or instead, you could put 1242 nanometers times EV divided by lambda, and that has to equal this work function here. And I'm solving for lambda. Lambda equals 1242 nanometers times EV divided by the work function, which is 5.63 repeating EVs. You can see the EVs cancel on top and bottom. And so I get lambda equal to about 219 nanometers. So that's the wavelength. If I wanted to find the frequency, I know C equals lambda F. So if I wanted to find the frequency, I would go C over lambda, C divided by lambda, and we know lambda. And so I get the frequency is 1.36 times 10 to the 15th hertz. So that's the frequency of that photon.